let's take a look at just a couple of more possibilities when we're dealing with motion puzzles. There's just a couple more things that could happen. And the first one is right here. We start at two separate points and we have vehicles traveling toward one another. So suppose you want to meet a friend in the middle. One of you lives in Boston, one of you lives in Pittsburgh. And you get onto the throughway. And you want to know where in the middle will you meet. You can use this idea to solve a problem that looks like that. What's important is that when you take this piece here and this piece here, when you add them together, you get the total distance traveled. And that's going to help us in solving puzzles that look like this. Why don't we take a look at our first example to get an idea of how this works. In our first example, we have two trains and they're starting at different train stations. The train stations are 360 miles apart. So one down here, one down here. And we have two trains, we're calling them the fast train and the slow train. We know that the fast train exceeds the speed of the slow train by 10 miles per hour. In other words, the fast train is 10 miles per hour faster. They travel for two hours. And after two hours, they're still 120 miles apart. The question is, how fast is each of the trains going? So take a look here. Slow train, fast train, they're 360 miles apart. They travel for two hours. Now, there's still 120 miles in between them, which means if it was 360 miles total, and there's still 120 miles to go, they've traveled 240 miles so far. Now, let's use this information to fill in our table. Slow train, fast train. We don't know anything about the speed of the slow train, so we'll call it x. We know that the fast train is 10 miles per hour faster, so we call that x plus 10. They told us that the trains traveled for two hours, and so our time for each is two, and rate times time gives us our distances. Now we know that the trains traveled a total of 240 miles so far. So this distance, that's the distance that the slow train traveled, plus this distance, that's the distance that the fast train traveled, went a total of 240 miles so far. Well, this plus this equals 240. And so here I have my equation and I solve that and I get that x equals 55. Now, x is the rate of the slow train, so the slow train must be going 55 miles per hour. The fast train is x plus 10, so it must be going 65 miles per hour. So notice what we did. We simply took the information that we had. The picture was very helpful to me here to see that this is the amount I still had to go, so I could subtract that out see that they had gone a total of 240 miles combined, fill in my table, write my equation, and solve an answer. Let's take a look at one more example here. On example number eight, we have two airports, and the airports are 3,600 kilometers apart. The first airplane travels 792 kilometers per hour, and the second one 888 kilometers per hour. And it says, in how many hours will they be 240 kilometers apart? So, last time they gave us the amount of time, and this time they said find the amount of time. So, first thing I did was draw my picture. First airplane, 792. Second airplane, 888. And they're traveling toward each other. We want to know when will they be 240 kilometers apart. Well, there's a total of 3,600. When they're 240 apart, we'll have a total of 3,360 kilometers that these two airplanes have traveled combined. So this distance plus this distance equals 3,360. The rate of the first one, the rate of the second one, those were given to me right up here. The amount of time is what I'm trying to find, and so we'll call both of those x, and we multiply rate times time to get the distance. Now they traveled a total of 3,360 kilometers. So this distance plus this distance add up to 3,360. That gives me my equation, 
and I find that x equals 2. So it took a total of 2 hours for the planes flying toward each other to still be a distance of 240 kilometers apart. On example 9, we have train stations. They're 220 miles apart. One's in Boston, one's in New York. And the, it says that the New York to Boston train leaves at 8 a.m., travels 65 miles per hour. The Boston to New York train leaves at 9, and this one really flies, it goes 90 miles per hour. And it says, what time will they pass? Okay, perhaps they have to plan the traffic on the tracks, um, or perhaps they're making, you know, stops and they want to let people be able to switch from train to train. So here's our picture, New York to Boston, 65 miles per hour. We don't know how long it traveled for. It left at 8 o'clock. Boston to New York left at 9 o'clock, 90 miles per hour. Now if this one went X hours, this one left an hour later, so it traveled one hour less. So we say this one traveled x minus 1. That's one less than the other train has traveled. Fill in my table. I have my rates. I now have my amount of time. Rate times time gives me the distance. Now, when will they pass? Well, they'll pass when they've gone a total of 220 miles because the train stations are 220 miles apart. When this train has gone a certain amount and this one's gone the other certain amount and they pass, they've gone that total of 220 miles. And so I have the distance for the first, the distance for the second equals 220. And I find out that x equals 2. Now let's see what it says. It says what time. So if this train left at 8 o'clock and it takes 2 hours, then it must be 10 o'clock when the trains pass. Now, one last type of problem. These are actually pretty interesting, and it's a little bit different. Let's say we start at home, and we leave, and we drive off to Wegmans. Then, we turn around, and we come back home. All right, so we're looking at problems where we leave, and then we return. So, we travel out, let's say, 10 miles. We have to travel 10 miles to get home. So, this distance will equal this distance. Now, let's take a look at one example and then we'll be done for the afternoon. Example 10 says we drive into the country. So we have a little old man, he drives into the country, he leaves home, and he's going 60 miles per hour down the highway. He drives for a while, then he turns around, comes home. But he's a little more tired and he decides to take his time and instead of going 60 miles per hour home, he goes a little bit slower, 45. He's looking at the leaves, enjoying the foliage. And so the question is, if he was gone for a total of seven hours, how far did he go? How far out did he go into the country? <clears throat> well, let's draw the picture. Here's home, here's out into the country. He went 60 miles per hour this way, 45 this way, coming back home. Now, he went for a total of seven hours. We don't know how long he drove out into the country, um, but we'll call that x. Now, this is just like we did with the money, with the number of coins. The time out plus the time back equaled seven hours. So x, which was the time out, plus the time back equals seven. So the time back is seven minus x. You may remember doing that when we dealt with the coins. So coming back, 7 minus x hours, and I fill in the table, and I fill in my distances. Now, he went out a certain number of miles and traveled the same number of miles home. So we have the distance out equals the distance back, x equals 3. So the, he went 60 x miles to go out. That's a 60 times 3, 180 miles out. And he went 45 times 7 minus x. So 45 times 7 minus 3, 180 miles back. And so we could use that information to determine how far out into the country he went. This is the conclusion of our section on puzzle problems involving distance and involving motion.